Good afternoon. This is uh, Pastor Jack Lucas from Hilltop Baptist Church. Just wanted to give, give you a quick, quick interruption from normal programming. This, this afternoon, you're listening, well, first of all, you're listening to 103.7 FM, WFSJ, LP, Indiana, Ministry of Hilltop Baptist Church, very own radio station here in Indiana, Indiana County. Just wanted to say what you're going to be tuning into is a special presentation on behalf of Lily Palfrey. Lily is doing a 4-H presentation called We Serve you and this is for a military that, that is going to be activated going over to to another another na- another nation good afternoon and thank you for joining me for my or joining me today for my 4-h diamond project pre- presentation before we get started today we would like to pre- begin with the pledge of allegiance and the 4-h pledge I'm State Representative Jim Struzzi. I want to thank you all for your sacrifice and service to our great country. And now, if you would, I'd like you to join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge my head to the grave of thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living, for my club, my club, my community, my country, and my world. Accidentally. Thank you, Representative Struzzi, for leading the Pledge of Allegiance, and Naomi and Micah Bish for leading the 4-H Pledge. So I've thought long and hard where to start with this presentation. So I decided to start at the beginning. About a year ago, I found out my dad was getting deployed. At the same time, I was working on my, uh, working, was trying to figure out what to do for my diamond project. So I thought I would send care packages to my dad and his unit while they're away. I knew it would be challenging and and I would be out of my comfort zone. I also knew that it is very important to show them that we support them and remind them what they have to look forward to when they get home. When I presented my plan to 4-H, they asked me to include an educational presentation. They suggested I talk about being a military kid. First, I didn't want to do it. But as I thought about it, I decided I would. So I could tell everyone what it is like, the good, the bad, and why I wouldn't change a thing. My dad has served in in the Pennsylvania National Guard for 32 years. Over that time, he has had many jobs. Helicopter mechanic, flight crew chief, and swift water instructor are just a few. He is just one of the 1.4 million that serve in the United States military. Now that may seem like a lot of people, but it really isn't. That is only 0.4 or 4 tenths of a percent of the population. So it makes sense that most people don't have any idea what it's like to be in the military or in a military family. While I am incredibly proud of my dad's service to our country, it doesn't come without its ups and downs. Most of the time, it feels like the army comes first. For the most part, that's true. Being in the military is not a job. It is so much more. It is answering a calling very few are brave enough for. My dad answered that call at 17. He chose a military lifestyle. I, on the other hand, was born into it. So what does that mean for me as a military kid? It means that in my life, I have been taught army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I've been taught to hold myself to a higher standard. 
to appreciate the freedoms that we have in this country, but that those freedoms come at a cost. It taught me that life isn't a fairy tale. That's not a bad thing, though. Though sometimes a fairy tale ending would be appreciated. I know you're thinking, that's all well and good, but tell me what it's really like. Well, it's really hard. My dad works really long hours, and he's away a lot, even when he's, in not, he's not deployed. Between deployments, training schools, or schools and training, he has been away almost eight years out of my life, and I'm only 17. He misses holidays and birthdays, and he can't just call off work. As a result, I feel like I have to be tougher than I am. I don't like to show weakness, and telling you all this is making me feel vulnerable. I don't like it. I want to be tough and strong. So enough of that. Let's talk about the good stuff. I've gotten to do a lot of cool things because my dad is in the military. I've gotten a backstage tour of a flight facility in Johnstown and Harrisburg. I got to try my hand at an Apache helicopter flight simulator and did very well. Sometimes we get to go with him when he travels for training. I've also gotten to attend events where we slept over at the Natural History Museum and the Carnegie Science Center, as well as a summer camp for military kids. Another thing that I have done is attend to family strong bond weekends in different cities in the state. All of these programs and camps are designed to help us cope with military life, but they can be really fun too. The coolest thing I've gotten to do though is promote my dad when he became a first sergeant. Now you might have noticed all these boxes behind me. There are 150. This is the most important part of my project. Over the last year, I have written letters, designed posters, spoke before multiple groups, placed donation boxes at different businesses and churches, set up a PO box to handle incoming mail, set up a bank account to handle incoming monetary donations. And I just want to say that I am completely blown away by the generosity of the community. When COVID-19 hit, I was really afraid that I would not be able to complete this project. But so many people came forward and supported me. They donated, donated money and items and time. So much so that I'm able to send more boxes than originally planned. I wish I could thank you all individually, but please know that every penny is greatly appreciated. On this deployment, my dad's job is to take care of his soldiers. By sending these care packages, I get to help with that. Now that I've talked about me a little, we will now be moving on to our question and answer session. I will be answering questions you submitted during registration but first, a few friends and family members wanted to answer some of those questions. Hi, my name is Noah Krause and my dad is in the military. There are good things and bad things about my dad being in the military. The bad things are I worry about him all the time with him being over there. And since I play soccer, he misses most of my soccer games, pretty much all of them. But there are also very good things about him being in the military. I know that he's doing good for the country and he's serving it. I'm so proud to have my dad in the military. Even though there are bad and good things, you have to focus on the good things and try not to worry about the bad things. I hope this helps you guys with any questions that you had. Hi, my name is Trinity Krause and I'm a military child. 
My dad has been serving in the United States Army for 20 years now and has worked his way up to a, warrant, a chief warrant officer and he is currently away on his third deployment. Being a military child definitely has its ups and downs. Um, I know he's out there protecting and serving our country, which is a great, great thing. I couldn't be prouder of him, but it definitely does come with a lot of downs. Um, he's away for long amounts of times, for a year or more, and it's usually in unsafer areas. So that makes me really nervous because I don't know the area and he's not allowed to really say a lot about it and stuff. Um, another thing is we don't get to talk to him every day because of connection and stuff like that. Um, he also misses out on very important moments in our lives, like he doesn't get to come home for holidays or birthdays, um, and just like the little things that families do together, like going to the movies, going out to eat, um, going shopping, just stuff like that. Um, but I know it is definitely hard on him too. I know that he misses us, and we try to stay strong here for him. Um, especially hard because I have three younger siblings, so it's just hard to see how it affects them too, and I try to stay strong for them and let them know that everything's going to be okay, and especially for my mom, um, we all have to chip in, do our part, make thing, make sure everything's going smoothly, and, um, yeah, I hope that gave you a little bit of understanding of what my life is like, um, but I'm very proud of my dad, and I cannot wait to see him again and give him a big hug. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sadie Palfrey. My dad is in the military and is currently on his fourth deployment. My question was, what cool stuff have I gotten to do because my dad is in the military? The Child and Youth Program try to put together many opportunities for military kids to get together to help cope with the thought of their loved ones being deployed. Some cool things that I've gotten to do are go to a military kids summer camp, I've gotten to fly an Apache helicopter flight simulator, I've gotten to see my dad fly a helicopter over my house, I've gotten to sit in the exact seat that my dad does when he flies. I've gotten to see all the controls that fly the helicopter. I've gotten to tour the Fl Johnstown Flight Facility. I've gotten to sleep over at the Carnegie Science Center and the Natural History Museum. And I've gotten to see the first ever KFC and go to the Creation Museum in Kentucky. One thing I'd like people to know about being a military child is that it isn't easy being a military child. My dad has to work a lot and he leaves for long periods of time. Not many people do, do what my dad does and I think he's very brave and strong for being in the military. I'm proud of him. One thing I'd like people to know is that it's not easy because you hardly get to see your parent and they miss a lot of important events like holidays and birthdays. Hi, my name is Maggie Palfrey, and since my dad is in the military, I've gotten to do a lot of cool things. Like, he got two free tickets to a Pirates game for me and him. I also got to go to a really fun summer camp. I got to use the Apache helicopter flight simulator in my dad's facility. I also got to sit in my dad's seat in the helicopter and see what it looks like. And I've gotten to climb through a helicopter. So I've gotten to do a lot of cool stuff because my dad's in the military. Okay, now we'll move on to our question and answer session. So our first question, how can family and friends support military families prior to and during deployment? Now, I have another friend who didn't do a video, but she did to give us an answer to this question. So I'll read hers and then tell you how I feel about this question. Um, so her, her name is Tori Lavalsi, and she said, the best thing to do is ask. Don't assume you know how to help them, and don't assume you know what it feels like. 
Ask things like, how can I support you as you're going through this? Some people might need something more specific, like, can I help you with groceries? Do you need someone to watch the kids for a bit? And remember to ask how that person or family is doing after the newness of deployment has worn off. One of my friends, re one of her friends recently reached out to ask her how she was doing with her dad being gone. And it meant so much that someone actually remembered even though she is doing fine in addition to all of that don't ask unless you are willing to be there to listen and help when the answer is, I'm not okay. Now, I feel the same way. I don't want somebody who says, I know, what, I know how you feel. I know what you're going through when they've been through nothing like this. What really helps me though is to be with friends and family and to do fun stuff, like have dinner at a friend's house. That's what really helps me. And reading a book. <laughs> but so next question is, what is your biggest challenge? Well, if you noticed earlier, I don't like talking about my emotions and stuff. So really letting people know how I feel and if I'm not doing okay is really hard for me. So I have been getting a little better at this. My family's been helping me. So is my church family. But I'm still having some trouble. What are some things people might not realize about being a military child. Now, I had to think about this for a while, because of course, some people do know what it's like not to have your dad around or your mom or something, but what they don't realize is, some. what most people don't realize is some things can affect us differently than other people. Um, like when our church group went to visit a national cemetery, that was really hard for me. I had to sit on the bus while everybody else walked around. It didn't seem to phase most of them, but I know that they, they realized that I was having trouble. But a lot of people don't realize that. What do you do to cope while your father's away? Well, one thing I do uh, with my dad um, is we both have one of these little puppies. And so we like to send pictures back and forth of it sitting somewhere new. So he sends me it sitting on his bunk and I send one at home doing something fun with me. Um, and because of COVID and everything with all the masks, he actually sent one with the puppy wearing a mask. So that one was really funny. We also get to talk to him most of the time. And so he texts and calls us and makes sure we talk to him. But, um, so knowing what you know about the military, do you think you would be more likely to enlist? I personally would not. Um, there's been a lot of good that has come with being a military kid, but I just don't think it would be the path for me. I like the order and structure of it, which is why I'm thinking about law enforcement. But <laughs> just everything that they do, they do stuff like work on helicopters or swift water rescue, or um, they fly over fires and actually my dad just did water bucket training to put out fires not long ago. But 
that's not really something I would want to do all the time. Or go up in a helicopter. Though that would be cool to do. <laughs> but especially right now, everything is harder than it is or seems harder. And so it just makes me not want to do it. What branch of the military are the parents of the panelists in? All, everybody who was in the videos and me and myself, our parents are all in PA National Guard. Um, they're all deployed right now. And that's all I can tell about that. <laughs> um, when your parents are deployed, do you know where they are? Can you communicate with them and how? Skype, emails, call, text, FaceTime? Um, we have Skyped with my dad before. We text him all the time, and he calls every day so that we're able to talk to him. Sometimes multiple times a day, and he calls when we're doing something, and then, <laughs> then we get to talk to him, but we're kind of angry because he interrupted something. <laughs> but um, most of the time, we do know where they are, though not specifically, like general area, but we have to be careful about who we tell. What are some of the things you do to stay connected to your deployed parent? Like I said, we Skype, we text, we talk, and we send texts back and forth with puppy. Um, what are the benefits of being in the military? Now, most people think of military discount, but that's only a small thing that is not even within a lot of places don't really have it. But a lot of benefits are what it's done to change me as a person and help me through life. Um, what resources are available to military children? Well, like I said earlier, we got to go to a summer camp. Um, now the summer camp, we got to spend time with kids who have military parents also. Everybody there has some parent, or one of their parents, or both of their parents in the military. Um, but we also get to do things like strong bonds, which helps us stay together as a family and get through tough times. And they help us with all kinds of things. Um, what is the best and worst part of being a military child? Well, obviously the worst is the deployments. Otherwise, I wouldn't be up here talking about it. <laughs> um, but the best is that my dad has an awesome job, and I get to tell people about it. And that because of that job, he is my hero. What is one difference between uh, being in the army and being in the National Guard? So my mom helped me with this researching and everything and all this. But um, the biggest difference is that in the National Guard, you don't have to move every few years. Your parent is stationed uh, when your parents is stationed somewhere new. We pretty much stay in one place, but active duty military kids move every few years. The average child in a military family will move six to nine times in their school career. Six to nine different schools, six to nine times making new friends. Can you imagine all that? I can't. Thankfully, we don't have to do that. But the hard part for National Guard children is they do not live on an army base like active military does. So we are spread out all over the state. It makes it really hard to meet friends who are military kids like you. That is why um, we do focus on connecting 
together with camps and strong bonds and stuff like that. So our last question, what do I want, what do you want people to take away or learn from this presentation? I want them to know that military life is hard. That no matter how much you sugarcoat it, it's always going to be hard. Um, but that because I'm a military kid and I've gone through so much, it's helped me get through life, get through all the troubles that I've been through. And I wouldn't change any of that for the world. So thank you for joining me today. I will conclude this program with a slideshow and a special tribute called The Missing Man Table, read by Pastor Jack Lucas. Hello, I'm First Sergeant Frank Palfrey. I'm First Sergeant for Headquarters Headquarters Company, 28th Expeditionary Combat Aviation Brigade. We're currently at Fort Hood, Texas doing training in preparation for our mobilization. My daughter, Lily Palfrey, is doing her, her Diamond Award project for 4-H 
and I know that all of you are supporting her in that effort to send care packages to my unit. My job as first sergeant entails taking care of soldiers, and my daughter Lily is helping me do that by doing this project. I'm very proud of Lily. She took the initiative and did this all on her own without any prodding from her parents. And uh, she's put forth a lot of effort and I'd like to thank her and thank all of you for helping her with her project. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful day. The missing man table. The small table is set for one, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner. The table is round, showing our everlasting concern for our POWs and MIH. The cloth is white, symbolizing the purity of our men and women's motives when answering the call of duty. The single red rose, reminding us the lives of these men and women, their loved ones and friends who keep the faith while seeking answers. The red ribbon symbolizes our continued determination to account for them. The slice of lemon reminds us of the bitter fate of those missing, captured, and held as prisoners in foreign lands. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears for our missing and their families who've longed for answers after decades of uncertainty. The Holy Bible represents the strength gained through faith in our country, founded as one nation under God, to sustain those lost from our myths. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our heart to illuminate their way home. The glass inverted to symbolize their inability to share this evening's toast. The chair is empty. They are missing. Please remember, let us honor our American POWs, MIAs, and the successful efforts to account for them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we graciously beg you to come and take care of our men and women. Our men and women that serve proudly the United States of America, the land of the free. And because of their valid efforts, their willingness to serve, Lord, we can stand proudly on this country. As they stand solid for the flag, the flag that represents this wonderful country, the countries across this globe seek Lord, it's because of you that you've blessed us with the freedom, the freedom that we can find ultimately through your son, Jesus Christ. And as this day, Lord, we come to you and pray that the multitudes come and seek eternal security through your son and only by your son. But we just humbly pray, Lord, that you put your hedge of protection around our men and women as they serve. They serve proudly, boldly, humbly. But Lord, I just also ask, for the many families of the men and women that are serving. Lord, let them seek you for comfort and wisdom and peace. Be with our nation. Be with our leaders. Give them the wisdom, Lord, as we are representatives of you in this great nation. We thank you for Miss Lily and her willingness to serve and do this great part as her project. Lord, I pray that you bless her and and her endeavors to come through. But as Brother Frank and, and the men and women that are serving with him, as they embark on a journey across the, this, this earth, Lord, keep them safe and bring them home to us. We pray this to your holy most precious name. Amen. You just tuned in. You're listening to a presentation on behalf of Lily Palfrey and, and from the 4-H presentation called We Serve you. You're tuned in to Hilltop Baptist Church right here in Indiana, Pennsylvania. And thank you for listening to our own radio station, 103.7 FM, WFSJ LP, Indiana. Lord bless you.